My career with the drums started in early 1965, I think. I saw uh, a picture of Ringo Starr on a Beatles album, and uh, I liked the, the thing that he was playing, the instrument that looked weird for me at that time, as I was still a kid, five years old. I liked that look of that instrument, and later on my sister played the record, and, uh, and she explained that that is the drum, that's the way it sounds, and I fell in love with it from that time. Uh, later on, my father took me to some uh, shows of bands that visited the island, uh, and I saw in reality what a drummer looked like, what a drummer sounded like, and how they behaved when they played the drums. And that made me obsessed by it. So I started asking my father uh, that I needed a drum, and I wanted a drum especially when I started making a drum out of chocolate containers and covers and I started striking them and disturbing him. <laughs> Eventually he decided that okay he will get me a drum because he had already bought my brother a guitar and my sister a keyboard so he decided to get me a drum. But I had to be good in school. He put a condition that I had to be very good. I had to bring top marks. So therefore I started studying hard and working very hard to get those top marks and I got them. I met his requirement and my dad fulfilled his promise and got me a second hand kit from a local band called Los Toros, I remember. It was a pearl kit that he got me and that was the kit that made me a long time. Well, my first kit that my father bought was a second hand pearl. And I loved that drum. I started playing with it, adding stuff to it, cymbals and adding additional tom-toms, you know, drilling it and all sorts of things. I really loved that drum. I was so much in love with it. I used to spend almost four or five hours a day around it. Then later on, when I... Uh, that drum continued with me up to the 70s. I mean, I played with two bands with it. And, it, and in 74... I think I sold it and I was very sad but I was about to go to England in 1975 so in 75 when I went to England initially I did not have money I couldn't afford drums so I started renting drums it all varied from Ludwig brand to uh, Premier uh, I played sometimes in Rogers Yamaha and uh, I was playing initially light shows and uh, joining into competitions, you know, these amateur drumming competitions, I was joining them. And in one of them, I won a voucher and uh, that voucher was to purchase a drum. So I bought uh, a Pearl I, because I started with a Pearl and I loved the Pearl, even though I tried the other brand, I still loved the Pearl. And that Pearl drum, which I bought in 1976, it remained with me for a long time. I brought it back with me from UK to Bahrain. And uh, I started Osiris with that Pearl drum. Uh, I added things to it, gongs and rotor tom-toms. But I really loved that small kit. It had a unique sound. Uh, then, in one of the exhibitions, I saw uh, Tama. And I love the sound of Tama, spe specifically that model. Uh, and uh, I decided that I wanted to change my pearl kit into Tama. So I met a friend who had a musical shop, and he decided that he will order Tama for me if I ordered a certain quantity. So I said to him, I want a customized, uh, customized drum made specifically for me. I wrote the specification and he obliged and he ordered that customized drum for me and uh, that kit I, it arrived in Bahrain 1970 sorry 1986 and I had that kit until this moment I used many other kits but I still love Tama and I think Tama gives me the right sound that I want Uh, when my father bought my uh, 
first kit, 1968, sorry, 1966, I think, 1966, 67, it's between 66, 67, I'm not particularly sure. He brought uh, the second hat kit for me, the pearl kit. Uh, he, he also hired a teacher for me, a tutor, who was actually the same teacher who was teaching my brothers and sister. So uh, the tutor started uh, drum lessons with me. Of course, at that time Bahrain was very basic and we did not have that much facilities uh, of uh, musical teaching. So therefore, um, the tutor could only find me jazz books teaching how to play drum, I mean jazz time. Therefore, I started my uh, drumming career with jazz. I started learning jazz beats, playing jazz beats, jazz drums, uh, rhythms, and uh, uh, it continued for two years until I was satisfied that I was good enough, I could read notes, uh, drum notes, and I was capable of playing uh, basic drum kits, beats. Then I joined my brother in a band. As I said before, I started uh, my drumming career learning jazz. Therefore, I used to hold the traditional grip, which was putting the drumstick between the, the t between the two fingers, and I used to play that that way with that grip for quite a while. But uh, gradually, uh, I mean, my brother started going into rock. And so the band's direction that I was, the family band that I was playing with, was going towards this rock thing. And uh, he felt that there was no much power in, in me hitting the, the drum with a traditional grip. As I was pretty young, I mean, I, I was what, about seven, seven eight, eight years old when I started. So he started showing me pictures that drummers actually hold the, the regular way, the, the conventional way of holding the drumstick. So therefore, I started practicing changing my grip from the jazz grip into the traditional grip. And uh, I've been playing with the traditional grip ever since, from the 60s up to now. Jamming is something I did all my life. I mean, we were, uh, jamming was from the beginning. And most of the drummers start playing drums and they jam when they're at the beginning of life. They play cover songs and they play their own thing. So uh, my way of jamming was listening to the music. I particularly concentrate on the uh, uh, bass guitarist uh, and I try to follow him uh, and I find a suitable beat that uh, provides uh, uh, additional harmonization with him. Uh, of course, you have to learn the basic beats. The fundamentally, most of the drummers have to start with the basic beats, i.e., the shuffle, the uh, rock, basic rock beats, uh, the uh, samba, the cha cha cha. I know rock musicians say, "Ah, oh, we don't use the samba and cha cha cha," but you can use a version of it into your te uh, into your technique or or add it to your technique. So I use. I started by learning all these basic beats and then I apply those beats on the jam when we jam and if I feel that the, the jamming is jazzy I apply jazz beats and if I feel the jamming requires rock I go into rock it's just basically what I feel the music needs of course cover you pay the same beats as the original guy does but in most cases I feel what I what the music requires and I add the right beat to it. Off time uh, is something that is used regularly in progressive music. As the later stages of my life started playing progressive, I was uh, faced with playing off time beats. Generally, my technique of playing off time is to find the accent of the uh, of the melody, of the riff, I find the, the accent point and I try to play the riff and strike that accent, that off-time 
beat uh, in the right moment. So generally, I'm not the type of drummer who counts. I'd say one, two, three, four, five, and sixteenth count, and I go into uh, the odd number and play the beat in that. Uh, it, it for me it doesn't work because I don't feel the actual uh, off time uh, riff. Therefore, for me to play off time, I have to actually hear the riff, play the beat regularly, and find where the accent point is and strike the accent with the bass guitar to get it right into that off time mode. And that is basically my off time technique. Playing solo, I started playing solo from the beginning of my drumming career. I mean, I remember I started playing my first solo live on stage in 1968. And it started with a basic snare roll because I started playing the song Wipeout by The Ventures, which had a uh, short snare roll. And then I started adding toms to it, you know, and uh, bit combining the roll, the steady roll, with the toms strikes in between. That technique is used by most of the early uh, 70s drummers, 68 drummers. They always concentrated on playing this on the snare, try to play different formation on the snare, playing sort of uh, paradiddles, fast paradiddles, slides, uh, fla flas. Between all these techniques, they combine it on the snare, and then they add the tom-toms later on to them in a very fast mode, vast technique, adding the bass. So speed was everything in the early, early uh, drumming techniques, you know, in the playing solos. Of course, later, later, in later days, drummers became more robotic, more technical. They started adding double bass to, to their solos, and they started adding uh, paradiddles between the bass drum and tops. So it's more or less the later drummers, uh, the young drummers, started adding more technicality, but in a more robotic way. It's like playing exercises mashed together, four or five exercises a day. Early drummers did whatever they felt at that time because it's all relied on the snare, adding other things to it. So solos combined, uh, playing different roles and different feelings. At that moment when you are striking the snare, you just think, oh, what am I going to do at? What, am, what would I add next? Would I add the toms? Would I combine the, uh, flickering between the cymbals and the toms. So fundamentally, it's again more what I felt. I played no fixed solos throughout my life. I always felt the solos and it came there and then in every concert, every show I play differently. The biggest advice I give young drummers is to listen. Listen to the variety of musics that's out there. And nowadays, there's so much variety to listen to. It's not only playing rock, so I listen to rock and I play rock. No, you can add other techniques. If you're a rock drummer, you can add other techniques into your playing. But by listening and feeling the, the rhythm, the patterns, the, uh, uh, the mood of the music, you can give better drumming to that music, you know? It's a question of feel. Uh, you can strike a snare like a machine, but it would feel differently when you strike a snare with a feeling at a specific point than striking a snare on a rhythm on a count like the machine. Avoid being robotic. Try to concentrate on the, the music, the background. Play those musics uh, the way you feel. You don't have to copy the original, play it your style, uh, learn all the different basic beats, beats uh, even if they are obscure to you, like uh, odd Latin African beats, add them, incorporate them into your style. This will make you a better, versatile drummer, you know, and avoid being robotic, try to be creative. Listen to the baser. The baser is actually 
the guy that will give you the riffs and the beats that you want to play. So my advice is listen to music, feel, listen, listen and listen.